by your board this morning, you should have a wonderful day with nothing happening in your lives, okay, except good things. Um, we will go ahead and get started momentarily. We had a little bit of cross uh, mic uh, with a meeting across the hall, so I want, before I bring up the amazing uh, Becky Weldon, um, we'll just make sure that everything is in, uh, in order. Uh, there's some changes to the agenda. Unfortunately, Nancy Lindley um, is still having serious back problems and was unable to come today. And then Assist Thai Visa, Reese was called out of town. And then uh, Nico was going to be here and he woke up this morning very sick. So um, we have been doing some interesting juggling here. And, um, but are just so glad to have you all here. And, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Becky, who is, we're gonna be blessed with Be an hour of Becky, and then we'll have our seventh inning stretch. Um, uh, so uh, for those of you who may not know Becky, um, she is, uh, has worked as a consultant and advisor to museum projects in Northern Thailand and is a committee member of the wonderful Playa Lifelong Learning Program. Uh, and she is going to present to us on the museums in uh, Thailand, Chiang Mai, maybe some northern areas as well. And um, moment, please. Um, so at this point, it gives me great pleasure and with huge thanks Becky Weldon, please come. As you watch the presentation, uh, I'll be very happy to offer you the opportunity to ask the questions, and I may possibly be able to help answer. <laughs> so uh, the presentation today will be about uh, starting with museums in Chiang Mai. I'll talk a little bit about some others as well. And uh, you'll see at this uh, uh, beginning slide here at the top there, do you know what that logo stands for? No. no. That is the provincial logo of Chiang Mai. And you see the elephant there, of course. And uh, so elephants are at the center of our culture. And uh, elephants are very interesting because they represent uh, not only uh, you know, their, their physical being, but also wisdom and knowledge. Uh, they're considered extremely educated animals, so uh, they will be helping us think about museums. Uh, our community in Chiang Mai, uh, we refer to it in English, Chiang Mai, of course, and uh, in Northern Thai, and this is the Northern Thai script here, right here, Jian, not Chiang, but Jian with a J, Jian Mai, and that is written in the script that we call Kam Muang, 
or the language of the city, which is the Northern Thai alphabet. And then down below, for those of you who uh, read Central Thai, it says Mueang Chiang Mai. So it's the city of Chiang Mai. And uh, so this is the area we'll be talking about, which is our community. It's where most of us live. And in the province, we have a huge number of museums. Every time I meet somebody, they say, oh, museums, you know, what's happening with museums? Where are all the museums? Well, they're all here. We actually have a total of 120 museums here in, uh, in the city of the province of Chiang Mai, the province of Chiang Mai, not only the north, but actually in Thailand, a total that is registered on some databases, and I'll show you some links for that later on, but a total of uh, 1,400 museums in Thailand. And one of the largest number of museums for a country its size. So here, I'm sure you recognize some of these, are the Three Kings and the National Museum, the Bank of Thailand Museum, the Princess Dara Rasami Museum, and of course, the art museums down below. I'll be talking a little bit about all of those. So, a number of the museums are in historic houses, and these historic houses are quite interesting. Uh, the one up at the upper left here, this is the original courthouse. This is what's known as the Lana uh, Folk Life Museum, across from the Three Kings Monument in the center of town. But it was originally the courthouse. You can go in there and you can look at Lana culture, but you can also uh, have a view of the original courtroom. And then uh, across the street from it, where the Three Kings Monument is located, is the uh, provincial offices, the original provincial offices here in, uh, in Chiang Mai that were um, the administrative center for what we call the Monton Payap in those days when Northern Thailand, the kingdom of Chiang Mai, joined uh, the kingdom of Siam. And then this building is quite interesting because this is um, the home of Princess Dara Rasami. And it's the Dara Piro Museum, which is out at the Border Patrol Police um, camp. And uh, this is where she lived after her husband, Chula Longhorn, passed away. She was the daughter of the King of Chiang Mai, and Prince Chula, uh, King Chula Longhorn cemented the relationship between Chiang Mai and Bangkok through their marriage. Then um, we have the house down below, which is on Top Hay Road. Many of you drive by it and see a sign, Lana Architecture Center. This is actually the home of Chao Burirat and Chao Kung Burirat, who was the last, uh, uh, one of the last members of the aristocratic family that lived in the center of town. And then down below here on the right hand side, uh, is a building that is um, in the Lana Historic House uh, Museum collection, which is at Chiang Mai University. And this is a very interesting one and has some particular application these days. It's the former home of Luang Anusan. Luang Anusan actually was a member of a Thai Chinese family that established one of the first uh, pharmacies up here and provided uh, pharmaceutical <laughs> uh, uh, medications and other things that were used by doctors while they were developing the medical, the medical programs up here. Anyway, his home was very beautiful and it was donated to Chiang Mai University and made a part of that collection, which I'll talk about. Also, we have a number of them, of these places that you saw are actually university associated. And I mention this because many people don't understand who runs these places. So uh, you have university association. Uh, the National Museum here uh, is actually run by the Fine Arts Department and the university associated with the Fine Arts Department 
uh, fine arts department is called Gong Sila Bakon. And Sila Bakon University is the university that has, I would say, probably the most curators, art historians, and people who are museological um, experts. But what is also quite interesting is that Princess Dara Rasami's um, uh, home is actually run by Chula Longhorn University, all the way from Bangkok. So it has a very different orientation, but it is specifically associated with the fact that she was, of course, married to Prince uh, King, not Prince, I keep saying Prince, uh, King Chula Longhorn. And then you also have at Rajapat University here, which is in the center of town, uh, we have a Lana, uh, Alana um, Ethnographic Museum and a number of other places, and I'll show you. And then at Chiang Mai University is the one who runs one, the Lana Historic Houses, the CMU, the Chiang Mai University Art Gallery, and also the Kung Chao in the center of town. We also have a number of places that are associated with natural history which I think many of you would be find quite interesting. Um, the Hui Geo Arboretum is on the road up towards Doi Sutep, just before you get to the zoo. You pass the zoo and then you go up the mountain. But the Arboretum is very important because it is actually run uh, by the um, botanical department of the, uh, 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 how can I say, yes, the department that is in charge of uh, forestry and also environmental preservation. So you have the names of all of the trees and plants in there. Chiang Mai Zoo is also right next to it. Chiang Mai Zoo was actually founded by uh, an American. Uh, yes, Harold Young. He was a missionary who lived here and the collection of the animals was first put together uh, for teaching, actually teaching people who had to work out in the countryside how to develop their relationship with wild animals. So it was quite interesting. He was uh, uh, actually born in southern China, raised in the Wasp states in Burma, and then moved down here after World War II, after serving in World War II in this region and was working with OSS and training people to go out and work in the countryside, mostly soldiers. And then the Queen Syracuse Botanic Garden, which is up in the Mebrium area, uh, is also uh, a beautiful place. It was open fairly recently, and uh, primarily because uh, it was her desire to support the uh, botanical collections that exist in this area. Also, the Museum of World Insects actually is in the center of town. There's also a Siamese Siam insect zoo on the way to Marine. But the Museum of World Insects is uh, actually on Sirimakalajan Road, and it's got an incredible collection. Uh, moving onward, many archaeological sites and archaeological sites, of course, uh, are uh, historically oriented, and many of them also have uh, museums that are associated with them. I will come back to this. Uh, temples, uh, you may see, may have seen on the announcement for the talk, uh, the uh, picture of Wat Gate. We call it Wat Gate, using the short name Get uh, Get Kararam, uh, which was. Um, a, a uh, temple that was established by Princess, well, it was established before, but it was developed by Princess Dara Rasami and has a wonderful museum. And then there are a number of other muse uh, uh, temples that have collections. One of the things I'd just like to mention to you about museums in, not only in Chiang Mai, but elsewhere in Thailand, you may know from um, the, uh, Buddhist concept that you don't hold on to things. So people, when they're passing onwards, they, they don't keep old stuff. And they very often give it away, or they just throw it away. 
And because if you keep the old stuff, well, then the spirits and everything that's associated with it will also stay. And so in many cases, those valuable objects that belong to various families are taken to the temples. And so the temples have actually become the primary custodians of extremely large collections. They have collections that are not only um, ritual and religious objects, but also are objects that are related to various um, uh, various rites and rituals and ceremonies that are performed in the communities that, where they're located, and they are actually used on important events. So the temples have become uh, the location of huge collections, and I'll talk a little bit more about what they've been doing with that in a little while. And then uh, ethnographic collections that were specifically developed by academics. You have the Lana Folklife Museum, oh, sorry, go back. Lana Folklife Museum up here that was developed by uh, academics who work with Rajapad and Achiva and the other uh, educational institutions uh, with the Provincial Cultural Affairs Department to develop a uh, presentation on you know, on the uh, ethnographic or the, the life of Northern Thai people. And then you also have one that was developed by William Geddes. You may have heard his name. A, uh, actually, an um, uh, autobiography of his was just published. He passed away not too long ago. But he was one of the foremost uh, uh, researchers on ethnic groups in this area. And the collection that was put together is a Thai Hill area collection that has been administered first by um, the foundation and then later on at the university, Chiang Mai University. And now they've developed a Highland People Discovery Museum, which exhibits the collection that relate to the different ethnic groups. And then down here you have the Museum of Lana Ethnicity developed at Rajapat. University right here in town. And art, you come to art, and uh, the latest uh, development here with my EM Contemporary Art Museum uh, is quite interesting because it comes from a personal collection. Uh, Jean-Michel Bourdelet and his wife put together a large collection of contemporary and modern art artists. And when his wife passed away, they made the decision to uh, open an exhibition uh, gallery here, and that is my EM. Uh, also, you have the Chiang Mai University Art Center up here. Uh, Chiang Mai University Art Center is very important because thesis exhibitions are held there. And also, they have a regular exhibition of art on at any time. Um, the House of Photography is an important place because it uh, conserves historic photographs. And so they have a specific project working with local collectors of old photographs. And uh, you can access that collection online. And you can also go and see regular exhibitions. This house is actually located behind the courthouse at the center of town. It's part of the um, the collection of museums at the Three Kings Monument. And it was the former home of the uh, chief judge at the courthouse. And then just to, it's a gallery, it's not a museum per se, but it has a wonderful collection. Uh, Kumwatana taught art here, studied overseas, taught art at Chiang Mai University, and has a wonderful art gallery. And then you also have military museums. Uh, we have the Tango Squadron Museum. Those of you who uh, drive through the airport see a collection of old aircraft uh, just off the road and drive from, uh, say, Central Airport uh, Shopping Center going towards Neiman, and uh, you'll pass by it. And also there's a Kavila 
uh, Memorial Museum, which is a museum that was, uh, which is dedicated to uh, King Gavila, who became king after the Burmese were defeated by the Northern Thai and the Siamese armies. And a more contemporary military museum at the 7th Artil Artillery Bat Battalion Museum, which is on the way towards um, Marine. So, after I've showed you all of that, and you're probably falling asleep by now, uh, I'd just like to talk a little bit about uh, the concepts of museology. My background is actually in the philosophy of museums. I'm not a curator per se, an expert in any particular aspect of art history or any period of art history. I design museums and I also help museums to achieve their mission, to define and achieve their mission. So what has always been very interesting to me has been what is the original Thai museum? And I go back to the concept of what I talked about before, about what is a Thai museum? It's the temple. And it's where all the old stuff gets taken. And also in the temple, you have the three aspects of museums, communication, you have, your, you have murals, of course, and of course you have sermons, you have lectures, you have presentations on all kinds of different things. You also have a reliquary, which is a storage area. Many people don't realize that this upper central area on the Prachedi in the temples is actually hollow. And inside that hollow chamber are important old sacred objects, which is one of the reasons why when you go to archeological sites, you see the top has been knocked off. Why do they knock off the top? because the important and valuable objects are inside there. So it goes from anywhere from Buddha images to relics, but also to gems and other important, important objects. And this reliquary is very important. This is where the original Emerald Buddha, have you heard of the Emerald Buddha? The original Emerald Buddha was actually uh, place inside a reliquary at the Emerald Buddha um, Temple in Chiang Rai. And when lightning struck the Prachedi and the top was taken off, they took the Buddha out, they saw the Buddha inside and took it out and that's how they discovered the Emerald Buddha. And then in addition in the temples, you always have a library. The temples were the places where people learned how to read and write. So uh, it, it, of course, primarily men. Uh, when they became monks, they learned how to read and write their local language, but also uh, other languages as well. And all of the books, documents, and chronicles have been preserved in the library in the, in the temples. So it's communication, storage, and research. So in the beginning, when the Fine Arts Department came up here, um, the traditional name of Chiang Mai was Nopaburi Si Nakhon Ping Chiang Mai. And the role of the Fine Arts Department was to preserve the important historical sites. And so they were responsible for the conservation of Thai national heritage around the country. But they started in Chiang Mai, in 19, by 1933, uh, they had 17 sites that were nationally registered historical sites, and now they have 63 to date in Chiang Mai. So lots of places to visit. These are a few photographs of, you know, a, 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 a corner of the wall. Oops, did I turn it off? Sorry about that. What happened? There it is. Okay. The uh, of the wall, but these are photographs that were taken of the moat and the wall that date back around a hundred years, so that you can see what it looked like before. And these are stored on the Fine Arts Department website. Here's a picture of Watsu and Dog, which is the place where 
the relics of the members of the former royal family are, uh, are, are memorialized here in the small chedis. And these are old photographs of the site and an old Buddha image which actually dates back to the Chinsan period, over, over 700 years ago. This is Wat Jet Yod, another historic site. You can also find information. They do have a little uh, museum there and an exhibition. Wat Jet Yod is very important. In the year 2000, Thai year, what year are we now? 25, 65. So 565 years ago, the 2000th anniversary of the Buddha when he entered his enlightenment was celebrated by all of Asia in Chiang Mai. Yes, they came from all over Asia, from India, Nepal, China, Tibet, Korea, Japan, everywhere. All of the Buddhist countries sent representatives to Chiang Mai 565 years ago. And this temple was built specifically for that conference. Not only that, the people who uh, did the uh, re reliefs along, around the, around the Prachedi were sent to India to study specific ways of uh, at specific ways of doing these types of relief, which have now become an aspect of uh, Northern Thai architectural and art uh, style. And of course, we have Wat Patat Doi Sutheap, which is the mountain that overlooks us. And that's, you know, a picture of that, of the. Um, but the important thing about Doi Sutep is that not only is there a temple, but there's also a museum. It's a very important museum at the temple. They're mostly related to Buddha images, but also religious objects. And this is a picture of it. But the National Park is considered by Thai people as being a natural museum of Doi Sutep. So the, uh, the, the, um, uh, forestry Department also has an office there which has an exhibition on the background of the National Park. So it's part of natural history museums. And we have lots of, I'll show you a few more pictures. Uh, Tapak Gate, of course, which everybody knows, not far from here, was originally constructed in 1296. These are two pictures that were taken in 1879. And this is what it looked like after it was rebuilt. Uh, the rebuilding of the gates was uh, actually sponsored by uh, Hans Penn, a German uh, uh, architect who, uh, and historian who documented a lot of these things. And he worked with the architecture department and uh, redesigned the city gates and rebuilt the city gates. So here we come to the National Museum. I have no idea what we are doing on time. Please show me in time, so. <laughs> okay, uh, the National Museum. The National Museum is actually located at the Northern Region Office of the Fine Arts Department. It's Region 5, actually it's called Region 5. There are five regions uh, in Thailand. Region 5, and so they administer from this area all of the museums and also uh, conservation of natural heritage uh, from this area, from Chiang Mai, and all over the north of Thailand. And uh, this museum uh, has been a center for education. So they hold seminars, they give certification courses for people who want to work in museology and work in museums and also helped to develop the museum branches around the area. It was opened in 1973. And here are a few pictures of various objects. These are mostly objects that were used in the temple, Buddha images that date all the way 
all the way back, some of them date 800 years ago. Uh, this is a manuscript chest. The manuscripts were wrapped in textiles and placed in these airtight boxes to keep them from disintegrating uh, in the environment. And uh, this is a Buddha footprint, and this is also a, um, uh, how can you say, a, a sermon uh, throne, you know, the place where the sermon would be given. And then in the center of town, you have the Chiang Mai Arts and Cultural Center. Uh, which is located in the old uh, buildings that were built about 100 years ago, a little bit less than 100 years ago, at the center of town for the administration of the town of Chiang Mai. And then they were moved out of town towards on the road towards Merriam, as you know. We have the big provincial office out that way. But they were used uh, for the central administration office of Montong Payap, and later as a provincial hall of Chiang Mai. So here at the center you have the Three Kings Monument. You have the uh, Arts and Cultural Center, which really presents more a, um, a more contemporary perspective on you know, what is known as what we call Anna. And then they also have the Historical Center, which uh, exhibits objects that are of historical importance and the Lana Folklife Museum, which is across the street in the courthouse. And then behind that, in this building back here, is the House of Photography. So there are four, four museums, actually. You think of it as only one museum, but in fact there are four museums, and you would visit them separately, you know, you can visit separately, you know, each visit would probably take about an hour. So it's nice to be able to go there fairly regularly. These are photographs of those places. And then we have a very interesting museum built by the Bank of, Th uh, Bank of Thailand. It's on the road out towards the provincial offices and uh, out towards Merion. But what is very interesting is not only is there a, an exhibition of the money collection, and they have all of the old prehistoric barter system, early money, you know, everything that was used, uh, including those uh, uh, exchanges that were used by the Lana Kingdom, Thai silver coins, how to weigh it, uh, how to weigh it, all this kind of information. But the other aspect of the, of the collection is the textile collection. Textiles were also used for exchange, and they were considered very important. Many of them were woven not only with uh, cotton, but also silk, but using silver and gold. And they were very often given as gifts, and they were used as barter as well. And the big collection there uh, is very important. And it, this is one of the places that Payak Lifelong Learning uh, does a regular excursion, as we do to many of the museums. I'll mention a number of them that we've gone to recently. But we always do a daytime, half-day excursion to museums in the area. Another place where we've done an excursion, the Dara Piron Palace Museum, which is where Princess Dara Rasami lived, a very beautiful uh, piece of Northern Thai architecture, but also very interesting to learn about her life and the life of the people who worked with her, particularly in the time after her husband passed away and she came back to uh, reinvigorate Northern Thai culture. There's uh, Rajapat University, also has an extremely interesting collection of musical instruments. Uh, very important, and not only the instruments, but also you can uh, hear a lot of how they're played. And uh, it's one of my favorite, one of my favorite collections because you don't usually get to see a collection of Northern Thai musical instruments. Also, Payap Lifelong Learning will be having a, a wonderful um, presentation. It'll be this next week. You can get information outside but a uh, 
coordination and cooperation, not only between the Payap music uh, faculty, but also Northern Thai uh, musicians using Northern Thai instruments will be coming together to work together, uh, Western and Northern Thai music, using those instruments. And the Lana Traditional House Museum, we've had a number of visits there, led by Ajahn Viti Panichikum, and he's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful lecturer, lectured at Chiang Mai University, of course, for most of his career, and is an expert in art history in this area, but a, uh, a collection of old houses. It's at the university, uh, on the back side of the university, on the canal side, and you can go in, you know, pay a very small entrance fee, and then you can walk around and get information about all these old houses, who they belong to, uh, what the architecture is about, and everything else. And as I mentioned, there's the Highland People Discovery Museum. We will be arranging a visit there. They had a terrible fire, actually, a couple years ago, and they lost part of their exhibition, but it has been uh, renovated, and of course, most of the collection was preserved, so uh, it's now reopening. There's the Harris House at Prince Royals College, also a very interesting place. Uh, which can bring you up to date on the history of the uh, missionary presence in this area. And uh, very interesting is where uh, Professor Harris lived. Actually, that's why we call it the Harris House. But uh, the exhibition is uh, very, very interesting. And lots of um, um, uh, interviews have been done with people who uh, have grown up there and uh, you learn a lot about how they were involved in both education and uh, medicine. Wake is one of the uh, regular offerings that we have from uh, Payap Lifelong Learning. Wake uh, has an incredible collection. The museum has been mostly closed during this pandemic, as have been most of the museums. But it's in an old house, which is at the side of the main Vihan, and inside is this collection that has been uh, preserved there by the community. All the Thai temples have what they call a, uh, a, a council, a temple council, and it is a temple council that is preserved and uh, documented the objects that you see at Wat So there's very uh, interesting information about where these objects came from, who used them, uh, how they were used in the community as well. And the Tango Squadron Wing uh, Air Museum is very interesting. It's a collection of aircraft used in this area. It's actually put together by a foundation, a Thai American foundation. And um, I also have helped as an advisor uh, on that one, and it's uh, preparing to open in its exhibitions, but it also includes exhibitions of the remains of various excavations of uh, aircraft that were shot down in World War II, but also the whole history of that period of time. It's very interesting because it's actually brought together not only the Americans and the Allies, you know, the British and other but also the Chinese, the Japanese, and have all come together to help with the documentation. So you have um, objects, uh, aircraft that come from all these different countries and that we use in the entire area. So finally, just to sort of sum up, and then I'll be happy to offer some time for questions. There are two very important databases on museums in uh, Thailand, and they're separated uh, not only by uh, region, but also by province. And um, the one at the top is related to the Sirintorn Anthropology Center, which is in Thunburi in Bangkok. And they are the National Center for Anthropological Research in Thailand and hold regular courses. And uh, people from all over the country 
uh, come together, uh, come together. And so their database is here, and I presume that we will be making that available to you so that you can click on it. It does, when the database is open, I'd like to say one thing, they usually come up in time. But if you look at the upper right hand of the, of the web page, it does, you can choose language. And you can choose the English if you don't read Thai. Or uh, you can choose Japanese, you can choose Chinese, you can choose other languages that you might like to read or to practice. So the museum database in here, this is where most of the museums uh, that I was talking about and I said 1,400 museums in Thailand, this is where most of them are. So in most cases, you click on a region, and then you click on a province, and then in the province, it will give you the list of museums, and you can click onto those museums. It will tell you where it's located, how to contact them, and you generally have a map, and sometimes have a little gallery of what's in there. Museum Thailand is uh, actually run by uh, the Department of Cultural Affairs, you know, in the Ministry of Culture, and it's related to uh, the, uh, the, the government. It's also an excellent, excellent museum database, and this is uh, something else. It has a little bit more information on the various museums, perhaps not the entire choice of museums, but it includes most of the important ones, and the presentation is, is quite good. So I use both of these, and um, this is where you can find out the information for the museums in Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Nan, Payao, Lampang, any place you might want to go here, or if you go down to Bangkok, or go down south, or anywhere else, you can find all the museum information. So I'd like to thank you very much for putting up with me in this long talk here. <laughs> so, I think we probably need a, uh, we have another, yep. does anyone have any questions? Yes, a question, or questions. groups and uh, the oh and also Bank of Thailand they encourage you to come in groups at least this time because they do have a little bit of a personnel problem as a result of the pandemic and they do like to have people there and they have uh, excellent presentations there now both of these uh, the Bank of Thailand is one of our upcoming one of our upcoming uh, museum excursions and that will be, you can be notified on the Payap Lifelong Learning Project. We generally, now that the museums are reopening, we're organizing visits, and we generally ask to have at least 10 people for each excursion. So if we have the excursions, we also take care of the entrance fee and everything else. So um, the uh, information will be sent to you, and also we can uh, provide it through through the newsletter, be very happy to. Thank you, Becky. That was terrific. Uh, I just want to make comments as much as anything. We visited many of the museums that you mentioned, but one consistent factor is that we see the photographs. They're deteriorating fast. I don't know if there are a background of negatives or glass plates anywhere, but 
I see that history disappearing in front of me every time you go. The worst is Watket Karan. Watket Karan. Yes. That, the photographs in there are a shadow of their piece. Now, I know that the Fine Arts Department takes a, an interest, but I wonder what it actually does. And does the Bureau of Buddhism have any interest in this? Otherwise, we're losing history. Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, many of these places that have large collections, particularly the temples, um, have need of two, actually three different things, which we're working on right now from a museological perspective. One, for temple museum management, uh, a new program has now been developed through the Buddhist University to provide formation for monks and temple council members, people who are part of the community, to help with the uh, museums. So that is being developed as a foundation for preserving museum collections because they're very important here in Thailand. The other thing is that um, the uh, finances of upkeeping a museum is very difficult. And one of the things that, there are two things that the government has done if a museum is in a place that is uh, registered as a national monument, a national place, it does receive a regular subsidy. But the other problem is that if it's not, uh, they have to raise money in the community to look after the collection. Uh, there are two things that are done. One, the government is now subsidizing student visits to the museums. So museums are actually making money by developing programs to work with students all the way from Batong Siksa, from elementary level, all the way through university. So two visits per, for museums per school are actually funded by the government and a, a certain percentage is given to the museum to help prepare for the presentation as well. So they receive uh, support for that. Uh, the other thing is that people are also always commenting, well, why are the foreigners charged more? You know, why don't we, you know, just go in? Well, one of the reasons is, has to do with the, um, uh, the funding that they get both from the community, from the province, and from the national, uh, uh, the national uh, administration that comes from their taxes. So, the, the, you know, the, the government does help to survive some provide some funding, and they want to promote the visits by local people because they're the largest group of people. The other thing is that so few foreigners go into museums when they come as tourists because tour companies don't want to pay the extra 100 baht to go into the museum. They don't mind paying 500 baht for a meal. They don't mind paying 3,000 baht for a room. They don't mind selling natural uh, history and, and cultural history to make their profit, but they don't want to pay to go into museums. So very few foreigners actually go into the museums, and when they go in, of course, they're paying a different rate. They don't pay the taxes here, you know, they're visitors. This is not only the case in Thailand, it's very often the case in other countries. Thailand is criticized a lot for it, but actually you see in many cases the same thing is if um, is in Europe, if you don't have free entrance to a museum, generally local people can get a card that allows them to come at a lower rate and then visitors have to pay a higher entrance fee. So, you know, that's not unusual around the world. But the support is very important because when you go in and you pay that entrance fee, it goes directly to the museum and it is used to help preserve the exhibitions and to maintain them, at least to as much as they can. I have a question, Becky. Um, when you talk about the stupa, um, where they're like finding the, the um, uh, Emerald Buddha, is it solid all the way up to the top where it's open? And do, so they decide, when do they decide to put the preserves in, in the top of the, of the Okay, to speak about the Pracheti, let's see if I can go 
back to it. Okay, so speaking about what we call the Pratchedi in Thai, stupa is a word that comes from India, and you know we use it in English, and that's fine. Some people say it in a way that it sounds kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, yes, it is solid, all the way up to the hollow area. And how is that decision made? The decision is made on the numer numerological association with the cosmological implication of the prachedi. So in many cases, they are um, representing a cosmological uh, concept or iconography. So generally, in the prachedi, you have combinations of odd numbers. Odd numbers are considered, um, are considered auspicious even numbers are only used for funerals. So when you buy an object and it's only got, say, four levels, that means it was used in a funeral. <laughs> but um, objects here, you would have, you would also have, you know, the opening of the, the opening of the world, the closing of the world, and you would have a number of different levels that would all be uneven numbers. And it goes all the way up to that final it's solid all the way up there. And the height of the Prachedi is also cosmologically determined. So it has a, uh, it has a meaning, the actual numerology. In fact, what is very interesting is that uh, in math and chess and a lot of things that are related to math, uh, we've been able to use the uh, reliquaries, uh, the Prachedi in the museums, to teach math. We bring in kids and teachers and we teach them percentages and fractions and all kinds of different things related to the curriculum using these as examples and also using religious objects. So it's only this area here that is the hollow uh, chamber and then on top of it, this is also solid. This is a parasol that um, is honoring the objects that are inside. One more question, and if not, thank you very much. Oh my God. Thank you. Uh, just a final word to say is that we will be very happy to let you know about our excursions to museums. I do lead many, many of those excursions, and we also uh, develop uh, nice uh, uh, sort of lectures and promotions by the people who work there. Okay, everybody. Um, I think we, I've heard that it would be nice to maybe stand up. So those of you who are uh, of the U.S. bed and baseball, we are about to have a few minutes of a seventh inning stretch. Okay, so get up and move around, uh, talk to friends or whatever. Take a quick trip to the toilet if you need to.